I'm Mark Brown. I write and illustrate the Arthur books. Maybe you've read some of them. I also have a television show about Arthur, and maybe you've watched some of those programs. Well, I am really excited today because I get to have you visit me where I work. Would you like to read one of the books? I thought we could read one of my favorites, Arthur's New Puppy. Do you have a pet? We have two pets. They are cats, brother and sister. Romeo is the brother and Lola is the sister. Okay, are you ready for a story? Get comfortable, get cozy. Here we go. It's Arthur's new puppy. Yeah, and he's loving that puppy. He's so excited to get a new puppy. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. Arthur loved his new puppy and Pal, that's his name, loved Arthur. He's a very active puppy, said Arthur. He's a very naughty puppy, said D.W. Don't worry, said Arthur. I'll have him trained in no time. You think he will? Look at Pal, he's digging a hole in the backyard. Uh-oh. Here's your new home, said Arthur. You'll have the whole garage to yourself. But Pal did not like the garage. As soon as Arthur put him down, Pal ran and hid. He feels lonesome, said Arthur. Can he stay in the house? Please, please, please. Oh, all right, said Mother, but only for a day or two. Do you find Pal? There he is, he's running over to Mother and D.W. Arthur made a cozy spot for Pal in the kitchen. I thought you might need a few newspapers, said D.W. Arthur held Pal carefully the way his puppy book showed. Look, he's so excited, said Arthur. Look at your pants, said D.W. You'll have excitement all over them. Oh, it's okay, said Arthur. He's just a baby. Well, I think that baby dogs should wear diapers, said D.W. Wouldn't that be hilarious to see a puppy in wearing a diaper? Later, Pal ate his dinner in a flash. Uh-oh, said D.W. He has that look in his eyes again. Quick, said Arthur, his leash. But when Pal saw his leash, he ran and hid. I don't think he likes his leash, said D.W. Help me find him, said Arthur. I guess he didn't have to go after all, said D.W. I was wrong. No, you were right, said Arthur. He just went. Uh-oh. Oh, another mess for Arthur to clean up. Later that night, when everyone was asleep, Pell yelped and howled until he woke up the entire family. Go to sleep, said Arthur. Pell wanted to play. Don't forget to close his gate, called mother. Good night, said father. Good luck, said D.W. I wonder what's going to happen. Oh, there's baby Kate. I wonder if she's crying because of all the noise. Look, they put up a little gate for Hal to keep him in an area so he... And look at all the newspapers there, just in case. The next morning, Arthur was still in the kitchen. Wake up, sleepyhead, said D.W. And be careful where you step. Oh no, said Arthur. I forgot to close Pal's gate. Here's your scooper, said mother. You think this is bad, said father. Wait until you see the living room. Uh-oh, I don't think it's gonna be good. Oh my God, look at that. It is a mess. Ay, ay, ay. Pal looked very proud of himself. My new drapes, called mother. My doll, screamed D.W. Bad dog, said Arthur. Pal is moving to the garage, ordered mother. Here's the key to the garage, said father. I'll help you move his things after dinner. Father put the key on the hall table. Look at that mess. That is amazing. How did he get those curtains down like that? He must have jumped up and pulled on them. 
Arthur packed up Hal's things and went to get the garage key. <gasps> but it was gone. The whole family searched for the key. Hal watched. It has to be here somewhere, said mother. But the key was nowhere to be found. Wow, they are looking everywhere. It looks like you can stay in the house one more night, Arthur said. I heard mom and dad whispering, said D.W., and pal's in big trouble. They said he better be trained soon or else. Uh-oh, shh, said Arthur. You'll hurt his feelings. That night, Arthur remembered to close pal's gate. That's a good thing. Yeah, sometimes when we make mistakes, that's the way we learn, you know? He made a mistake that first night and left the gate open, but he remembered he didn't want to do that again because that got both of them into trouble. At school, Arthur told Francine and Buster about training. Training Pal. I'm going to teach him to do all kinds of things, said Arthur. Look at his pal on a skateboard. That would be hilarious. But I think dogs can do that sometimes. I've seen them. I used to have a puppy too, said Buster, but he was too much trouble. My parents sent him to a farm. My cousin had a problem puppy, said Francine. No one could train him. One day he just disappeared while she was at school. Uh-oh, after school, Arthur hurried home. Do you think Francine scared Arthur a little bit with that story? I think he might be scared. Oh no, said Arthur, what happened? I thought I'd take him for a walk, said D.W., but when he saw the leash, he went wild. You better get this cleaned up before mom sees it. Oh no, another mess. This puppy is trouble. Where is mom, asked Arthur. In the backyard, said D.W., looking for the garage key. Have you seen my dog training book, said Arthur? Uh, what's left of it is over there, said D.W. Oh, boy. Looks like Pal chewed up the book. That night, Arthur gave Pal an extra training lesson. I'll help you train this beast, said D.W. Let me get my whip. No, said Arthur. Dogs respond better to love. Watch, said Arthur. He's getting better. Sit, said Arthur. Looks like he's not sitting, really. He's kind of scooting down. Lie down, said Arthur. Oh, he's not lying down. Stay, ordered Arthur. Uh-oh, he's leaving to play with D.W. I know something he'll understand, said D.W. Time for your walk, pal, she said. He just needs a little more work, that's all, said Arthur. Why did pal run away when he saw his leash? I thought he might want to go for a walk, but he seems to be a little bit afraid of that leash. But Pell needed a lot more work. Arthur set up a training school in the backyard. On Monday, they worked on sit. On Tuesday, they worked on down. Wednesday was stay day. By Thursday, Pell was doing tricks. Good dog, Pell, said Arthur. Arthur decided to put on a puppy show for his family. When they see how well you've been trained, they'll never send you away, said Arthur. Pal looks pretty happy there. Arthur got up early Saturday morning to give Pal a bath. After breakfast, Arthur's family took their seats. Welcome to Arthur's puppy show, said Arthur. He held his breath. What you are about to see will amaze and astound you. If Pal amazes us anymore, our whole house will be destroyed, said D.W. There's everybody waiting for the puppy show. Arthur clapped his hands. Come, he said, and Pal came. <gasps> Sit, said Arthur, and Pal sat. Down, said Arthur, and down went Pal. Pal even did a trick. <gasps> Good dog, Pal. He 
He is a good dog, said mother. You mean he won't have to live in a farm, asked Arthur. Of course not, said father, not even in the garage. No one noticed Pal run behind the rose bushes. I wonder why he ran behind the rose bushes. Well, let's find out. When Pal returned, he sat up and wagged his tail. Look, he has something in his mouth, said D.W. It's the key to the garage, said Arthur. Good boy, pal, said father. Amazing, said mother. I think pal is very smart, don't you? That night, Arthur gave pal a special dinner. Time for your walk, pal, said Arthur. I'll get your leash. But Arthur couldn't find it anywhere. It was on the hook a minute ago, said Arthur. I know I left it there. I'll help you look, said D.W. Mother and Dad helped too. It has to be here somewhere, said Arthur. I wonder where it is. No one noticed Pal run behind the rose bushes. Look what he has in his mouth. The leash. He's got the leash and he's hiding it. What we like to do is to take the story we just read and think about how it might connect to a piece of art in the Metropolitan Museum. And I found something that I thought was very, very interesting. It's an etching, which is a, a way of making a drawing on a metal plate. And you, usually, you have to use very sharp objects uh, I took a class in printmaking when I was in art school, so I did make some etchings myself. But this etching is really beautiful. I hope that you look for it. And it's an etching, uh, I think it was made in Florence, Italy, back in the early 1600s, so it's very, very old. But it has uh, a feeling and it has dogs in it, because uh, we just read the story about dogs. And it's a little boy who has picked up his dog and he's kind of protecting it from another dog who's barking and maybe trying to do something that the boy doesn't want him to do to his dog. And uh, I think it's really beautifully done. But today I was working on some artwork and I thought maybe you'd like to see some of that work in progress and what I use to make that art. Well, first of all, I have to do a sketch and that's where I make all of my mistakes. You know. I think sometimes you guys think that I, authors, illustrators just sit down at their desk and they write something or they draw something and it turns out perfectly the first time. But that is not true. We make lots of mistakes. I use a lot of erasers because I make a lot of mistakes. And so after I get the story written, if I'm doing the writing for the book, then the hard work for me is really done and I get to play and I get to do the illustrations. So today I was working on an illustration for a book, and it's a story that you may have already seen, but I'm doing new artwork for it. This is D.W. standing at Arthur's bedroom door, and she's saying, that sign can't stop me because I can't read. And so you can see that the first sketch didn't turn out quite the way I hoped it would. So in red pencil, I made some changes to the way D.W. looks. I changed the shape of her head a little bit and the way her arms are positioned. And I think she looks a little bit better. So then I put it on something I call a light table. It's a flat box and it has light that comes up from underneath. So I put this sketch on top of that and then my good paper that I'm going to draw on, on top of that. And so I can trace my sketch into the finished art. And here's what that, art looks like now that it's finished. So you're saying to yourself, what did he use to make all of those colors? Well, what I do first is I find the right brush. And for a background, I use a really big brush. And if I want a blue or a green background, I mix the paint, uh, which is a gouache. It's like a watercolor. And it comes in a a little tube like this. So I squirt a little bit on my tray. So after I find the right brush and the right colors, you can see here, 
I have more than one tray going for different ranges of color. This one has cool colors in it, I call them. They're blues and greens. This one has more of a variety of all the colors. Then I use my colored pencils to add details. I found this old carrier at a flea market and it's good because it has little boxes in there where I can kind of sort my colors, put yellow in one box, pinks and reds. And then on this side, I have the cool colors, the blues and the greens, the purples. So then I use my colored pencils to add more detail. And then I send it to my publisher and they take photographs of it and they make many copies which turn into books. And then you get to read them in the library. Okay, I was thinking maybe you'd like to also see how I plan a book. You know, you have to see how many pages you have. This was for the, the book, Arthur's Tooth. And every page in the book is in this plan. I call it a thumbnail dummy because it isn't the real book. And sometimes things change from this stage, but at least this gives me a chance to see where the pictures will go, where the characters will go, and where the type will go. Well, I wanna thank you for coming into my studio today and listening to the story and maybe thinking about making your own stories, your own books. That's what I would really love to know that maybe one of you or many of you out there will grow up and become an author or an illustrator or an artist. And my job today would be complete if something like that happened. But uh, I'm gonna say goodbye now and I hope we get a chance to see one another again. Thanks for stopping by.